3D Sheer Con from the Jungle Book Acrylic Nail Art Tutorial by Hot Pink Zebra Polish. Hi guys, in today's video I'm going to show you the first segment in a Jungle Book series and this one is going to be Sheer Con, which is probably my favorite of the series. I absolutely love the way he's positioned on the nail and he just has that classic smug look that I think I definitely associate with that particular tiger. I hope you like this as much as I do and I will be uploading the next five tutorials right in a row so every day there will be a new one and as they're uploaded I will put the links in the description box below so check back for that and I will see you next time. Bye! So I'm going to begin by creating one of my favorite backgrounds that I ever have created. And I know I say that a lot, but it's always true. <laughs> and so this one is going to be a marbled green gradient. So I had five different shades of green from a really light, almost white, creamy green into a very dark green. And I'm just going to grab a double bead each time. So two shades, always dipping into the lighter color first and then the darker color and blending those all the way down the nail, kind of gently swirling them together. I don't want to swirl them together so much that it creates a smooth gradient, but I don't want to not swirl them together at all where it just kind of looks like stripes so you kind of have to figure out your balance then i'm going to grab some green mylar flakes and press them into that acrylic if it's already too set up you can just put in a little bit of clear acrylic as adhesive essentially and then place those little bits of mylar flakes down so if you're only going to do one or two of these characters in a set instead of doing all five like i did i would still keep this as the background for the other nails that complement it or even create a very similar design like this as a french tip or something you know as an accent nail but then encapsulate the design with a layer of clear acrylic that will protect those mylar flakes and keep the whole design looking just as you sculpted it then file the nail into shape with your e-file. If you notice you're starting to file into the mylar flakes, just kind of keep an eye on it and then really back off the filing that you're doing because you don't want to file them off. Now we're going to begin sculpting Shere Khan and we're going to start with orange acrylic. So whenever I'm sculpting a character, I like to start in kind of one area and I usually start around like face shape. It depends on the character and because Shere Khan has orange for like around his eyes and then down the bridge of his nose and then his cheeks and his chin and around his mouth are all white fur. You can't just do like his whole face with orange. So you have to kind of pick an area to begin with and then sort of build up from there. And the area I like to start with when I'm sculpting character, obviously in Shere Khan, um, I started up with his eye area, but I like to start with whatever is furthest away. And so whatever is in the back. And sometimes it's hard to tell when you're looking at a character, what would be the furthest away, especially if you um, don't have much practice in this type of a skill. You haven't sculpted many characters or animals or anything like that. And you don't have the knowledge base to figure that out. So when you're looking at a character, try to see, like try to just imagine if you could touch them, what would be the furthest away? What would it be if you were reaching <laughs> into the picture? What would be the farthest away thing that you can touch? Some people have a visual mind where you can see things like that and using that kind of a um, thought process as to what if you were feeling it, you know, you can tell, you can feel it in your mind. Uh, some people can't. So if that technique and that, you know, theory doesn't work for you, there's always different ways of doing it. And it's a lot of just figuring out what works the best for you. And sometimes you can take, there's visual clues. Um, there's usually visual clues that you can take. And it's all about just learning what they are and practicing. So if you are a little bit nervous about sculpting characters, just practice. One thing I did, and this was a couple years ago, I started it, but I sculpted every Disney princess because sculpting people was something that I was not comfortable with at all. And so to get myself past that and to get myself really into the mode where I'm just thinking to myself, you know what? I got this. I can sculpt people. It's no big deal. I sculpted every single Disney princess, like I said, and I was just, you know, I'm like, I'm going to be confident by the end of this. And I was. So that is something that if you are just a little bit concerned about sculpting a character, whether it's Mr. Shere Khan or whatever character is the one that you are in love with and would really like to sculpt, just try it. Maybe you'll sculpt the same character 15 times and not be happy with it. Maybe you'll be happy on the second try. Maybe you'll be happy on the first try. If it's not something that you've ever done before, you know, remember that you're your own worst critic and that I'm sure, you know, if you keep practicing, you will eventually be very impressed by what you've accomplished. So back to Mr. Shere Khan, as you can see, we have his cheeks started. So with his cheeks, I did just a first layer of that area. And then I went through with another bit of the white acrylic to really build up some height there. With all of these characters, I wanted them to have a very dimensional appearance to them. So I wanted to do more 
more 3D, more height on my 3D than I normally do. So I really wanted to build up some more on both his cheeks and his chin and really bring that acrylic forward. So after I have the first layer, and that first layer helped me, you know, kind of define the shape that I was going for so that when I added the second layer, it was a little bit easier to find it. And I wasn't working with so much acrylic all at once that it was going to set up before I was ready for it. And so kind of doing things in layers is certainly an applicable route to take. If you like working with a huge amount of acrylic at once and you feel confident with it and comfortable with it, that's there's no problem doing it that way either. If you'd rather do it in even smaller sections than I did, that's also perfectly fine. The one thing that I really dislike about watching other people's videos and learning from other people's videos, including myself if you are watching my videos, is that everybody has their own little tricks and tips and preferences. And you kind of it can be really easy to get stuck in somebody else's, you know, recommendations for do this, 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 and this in a certain way. And especially for something that, you know, you're trying to learn and take, you know, notes from for not just this specific design, but to learn the knowledge so that you can apply the techniques to anything, to any design, any character, whatever it is that you want to sculpt or create in the future. It sometimes can just be a little too straightforward watching a tutorial from somebody else because what they're doing isn't going to be exactly what you're doing because everybody has their, their own style. So when you're watching my videos or anyone else's from, for that matter, just remind yourself sometimes that just because what you're doing doesn't necessarily turn out identical to theirs or mine, that doesn't mean that it's in any way less skillful or less artistic or creative or anything else. It's just your style and your take on it. So that's my piece on the moment. I just really, it's something that I always think of when I'm making some of my videos is that I wish, you know, you would be able to get some knowledge out of it, even if you're not making this design and have something that you can apply to your art in different forms. So after I have his, I sculpted his nose and the inside of his mouth, I'm going to be adding some black acrylic around his eyes. So doing these little black details are something that you really want to make sure your black acrylic is a tad thinner than you may normally work with it, just because you're kind of pulling it into those long stretched out shapes. And then after you have them done this far, I am happy with the amount of sculpting that's on my Shere Khan, so I'm going to begin doing all of the little bits of detail with acrylic paint. I've got some diluted black acrylic paint that I'm going to be starting with. And with my black paint, the way I like to dilute it is I have my little bottle of acrylic craft paint and I pour just like an eighth of a teaspoon, a teeny tiny amount of water into my bottle. And it's, I think it's a four ounce bottle, just in case you don't know what size, because that could make a difference too if I'm giving you measurements. But then I just give it a quick shake and then the paint is a really good consistency for me. And I re-dilute it, I'd say probably every two weeks or so, because as I'm using the acrylic paint, it slowly begins to evaporate and it'll re-thicken up to a consistency that I'm not as happy with. So as soon as I'm starting to work with it, if I can feel that the paint isn't what I like to use, I'll dilute it again, reshake it up, and then move on from there. So even if you've diluted your paint before, you may just have to do it again. So then I'm going to add some of his little stripies on his face. Look at pictures of Shere Khan, whether it's this design or one off the internet, because his stripes have a very kind of distinct look to them and distinct numbers. So if you want to keep with the character as closely as possible as to the original, you may want to just have some of that reference photo available so that you get the stripes right. And I am particularly sensitive to striping patterns because with my Zeta Zebra character, she has very specific stripes too, three on her forehead and two on each cheek, and then the stripes that alternate down her belly. And I know what they are. And so I just, when I'm looking at a different character's stripes, I'm just very, you know, aware of them, I guess, probably because I have my own little cartoon that has a specific striping pattern. Add his whiskers, and a couple of little teeth. You want to make sure that you definitely give Shere Khan a few teeth because that's a big part of what makes him look a little bit kind of menacing. And then apply some gel sealer over the background. That'll make whatever mylar flakes are showing really, really shiny and catch the light. And then some matte top coat over Shere Khan and he is done. I absolutely love this one. Like, I, I don't know if I mentioned this in the intro or not, I don't remember, but this one probably is my favorite of this series, either him or Ka. I don't know. It's so hard to tell. I love them all. But this one especially just has that great smirk on his face, which reminds me of myself. I'm 
you know, prone to smirking too. So it makes sense. I hope you guys like it as much as I do. And please share any recreations with me on Facebook or Instagram. I'd love to see them and I will see you next time. Bye.